So short and sweet today, we're going to talk about appraisal waivers. Raise your hand if you know what that is. Okay, so good. Most of you don't. This is good. Okay. <laughs> so anyways, um, I've been seeing a lot more of this lately. Um, they kind of went away for a little while after the crazy COVID and prices going everywhere and all that. We stopped seeing it as much. But an appraisal waiver is when we have a property. You guys are already under contract. You know, we've talked about um, our automated underwriting system, right, where we run every file through the automated underwriting system to get that approval first, and then we put it into, you know, processing, underwriting, all that. Well, when we run a file, like once you have a property, this is not for TBDs. For anything you submit that there's, there's no property address, we can't, we don't know if you're going to get an appraisal. We have to have a property address. But when we run it through, sometimes, depending on the property, the address, um, where it's located, the down payment, which is a huge factor, and credit scores do come into play a little bit, you can sometimes get an appraisal waiver, which means you don't have to do an appraisal. And the whole contract, everything is going off of whatever the contract price is. You don't have to worry about the appraisal coming in low and having to make up the difference and negotiating. You just basically, appraisal is not required and you move on and you move past that. So it saves the borrower 620 bucks and saves everybody that, you know, nerves of, oh gosh, is it going to come in low or whatever. So um, we've been seeing, like I said, a lot more lately. Honestly, my last 13 files that I've submitted for, with property addresses contracts, I've gotten five appraisal waivers. So like it's, I don't know what's, I don't know if they changed something on the back end, Fannie and Freddie, um, but we, it's, they're coming back. Cause again, I told you like, I don't think I've seen one for two years before this. So um, my, the down payments have ranged between 20% down to 40% down from mine. So I was getting, when you're putting 40% down, I wasn't real surprised when I got the appraisal waiver. But when last week I put one in for 20% down and I got it, I was like, oh, wow, sweet. <laughs> so um, it's always a good thing because, again, you don't have to worry about that. It just means you don't have to do it. This is only for conventional loans. FHA, VA, USDA, you're not getting appraisal waivers. They don't do those. But for conventional loans with 20% down or more, it's a possibility. Um, again, your chances are higher if you, they have good credit scores, but it really does depend greatly on where their property is located. And there is no, I don't, I don't know the formula, I don't know the rhyme or reason, but I, there's, no, there's no guideline as to what it is. But so, you know, where the property is, like, oh, you'll get one over here. We don't know that. But just always, whoever your lender is, just ask them. If you know you've got a good client and they're putting 20% down or more, just say, hey, did you check to see if maybe we got the appraisal waiver once you have that contract in? Because it does make the process easier. If you do have, obviously, an appraisal contingency, you don't have to worry about hitting that, saving the borrower money, saving everybody a headache. Um, so it's uh, something that I've just been seeing more that I wanted to mention to everybody about. It's a good thing to be on the lookout for and to ask your lenders to check on. So obviously, Nicole, Matt, and I check every file, but other lenders, you know, if you happen to be using them, <laughs> just ask them. Make sure they're looking for that, okay? So that's basically so it. Just to mm -hmm. make sure I, I got it. If I have a client who's looking to buy, has 20% down, ask you to be the lender, you automatically do the, well, you check. We check. Now, again, like we can't check it. Like if they're just out shopping and you're like, hey, here's a property we're interested in making an offer on, we can't just check to see. Because we, if we, once we have the contract, mm -hmm. That's when we trigger a file, and that's when you have like the timeline of the three days of compliance and all that starts. If we were to try and check every property you're going to make an offer on, we would have to take, once we trigger a file, and if you don't go with that property address, we have to withdraw the whole thing and start all over. So we can't do that, but once you have the actual contract, they know that this is the house, you guys are binding, we'll absolutely run it through and check. So you're still gonna to have to negotiate those appraisal contingencies up front, but if you do get it, then it's all, you know, it's just an extra bonus. Sure. Yeah. It's like icing on the cake. <laughs> if you, the for the buyer. For and the buyer and... To make the, the offer more appealing because they're coming. There's a lot yeah. of Yeah. No, you still, you still got to negotiate. Yeah, we can't find it out beforehand. It would be, if we tried to do that, we would be... It, yeah, and it would cause problems in our compliance system too. To be putting putting files in, withdrawing, redoing a file, withdrawing. You know, 
it's, a, it's just compliance. We're not allowed to do that. <laughs> yeah. So we can't do that. But once you... Hmm? What are you doing? Playing? Yeah, it's just with compliance, they would they would be getting on to Nicole, Matt, and I strongly oh, okay. if we were doing that. So we do have to wait till you have the contract, but it is something to definitely look for once you do because it just makes the whole process easier mm -hmm. and quicker. So, okay. Any other questions? No? Okay. That's it. All right. Oh, wait. Let's go to work. 